Hey everybody, it's Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com with another video to boost your physics grade. And this video was inspired by a question that I had based on one of my most, actually the most popular YouTube video, which used Beal Savar and showed you how to apply Beal Savar to find the magnetic field strength for a finite wire. So the question that came up was, what do you do when point P is beyond the end of the wire? If you remember the formula that was derived in that video, or if you look at the formula that we derive in class, we usually have a finite wire, and it has a certain length, and we're looking at the magnetic field at point P. So we're given the direction of current. In this case, I'm just going to talk about the magnitude of the magnetic field and not the direction, because that's the important part. So we're given the direction of current, and that doesn't really matter when we're talking about the magnitude, and we're told that the wire is a certain distance away, and I'm going to call that distance A, and I'm actually going to draw it off to the side because I'm going to have to fill in in the middle a little bit there. So that's this dashed line along the bottom is meant to represent the shortest distance between point P and the wire, and that's distance A. So another way to say that is the perpendicular distance from the wire to point P. When we're solving a problem like this, the formula that you get, even though you start integrating in terms of lengths, ends up being used and applied in terms of angles. And the reason for that is because it's simplest to describe it in terms of angles. So theta1, then, is the angle from the line that's perpendicular to the wire, but goes through P, and a line that would go from point P to one end of the wire. Then theta2 is the angle that reaches the line going to the other end of the wire. And based on this setup, we get the magnetic field strength at point P equal to mu naught I over 4 pi A times sine of theta 1 plus sine of theta 2. And again, for the derivation of that, uh, see the YouTube video link in the description box. So the question then is, what if point P is beyond the wire? So then the distance A is still the distance the perpendicular distance between the wire, or the axis of the wire, as shown by the black dotted line, and point P. So A is, again, the perpendicular distance between the wire and point P, and theta 2 is still going to go all the way to the end of the wire, so we can measure theta 2 down in here like this. But what do we put for theta 1? And the short answer is that theta 1 was originally, remember, measured counterclockwise from that perpendicular line. So theta 1 originally was measured on the left-hand side here. When the wire doesn't reach point P, or when point P is beyond the wire, then we can actually treat this a little bit differently. When point P is beyond the wire, instead of measuring theta 1 going counterclockwise from that vertical line, which I've shown here as A, we can actually go clockwise in the other direction. So we would so we would draw that line going to the end of the wire and then measure the angle from the perpendicular line, which again I've shown as A, and this would be theta 1. And I could call this negative theta 1. And so if I measured that as 30 degrees, I would actually insert a negative 30 degrees in the equation. For example, if theta 1 was negative 30 degrees and theta 2 in this case is quite big, maybe 80 degrees, then I would substitute those into the equation and keep the negative 30. Then the next question that comes up is, why does this work? To understand why it works, we look at the definition of Beal Savar and how the magnetic field was originally derived and realize that the strength of the magnetic field at P comes from individual tiny pieces that all get added up. That's what the integral does. Another way to look at this is to consider two separate wires. For the first one, we just extend the wire until it reaches that point that's the shortest point or the closest point to P. And then if we do that, we would have two different angles again. Theta 2 would be this angle in here, so that would be again approximately 80 degrees. Theta 1 would actually be 0 in this case. But since sine of zero degrees is just zero itself, we end up only considering the effect of theta two, sine of theta two. So this simplifies down. Then we could consider a second wire, which is just the extension. So it's just considering the part that we added to extend the wire to point P. And I'm going to call this one theta one, partly to clearly 
um, distinguish it between the first wire, which was extended until it reached point P. And I'll just visually hash in the part in the first wire that was extended. So now we're considering just the extension, just the hashed part. And we can similarly show that we would go from one angle, which is zero, to theta one. So we actually can jump straight to the simplified form, and we would find that the field strength B prime of P, and I'm going to call this B prime again just to distinguish it from the first wire that we considered. And this is equal to mu naught I over four pi A times sine of theta one. Now, since the extension was an artificial thing, I added that, that wasn't part of the wire originally. What I'm going to do is consider the total that I found in the first wire with the extension and then subtract the extension from that one. Since I added the extension artificially, I can subtract the extension, which was the second wire, from the extended wire, which was the first wire. And this gives me the net magnetic field at point P. So this gives me that the net magnetic field strength at point P is mu naught I over four pi A times sine of theta two minus sine of theta one. And since sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta, this is the exact same result that we would get if we were to insert negative theta one into the original equation. I'm Scott Redmond and I help students pass physics. If this video was helpful to you, please like it in YouTube to let me know.